The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, noon till 1 p.m. Eastern Time, every weekday. <clears throat> My pleasure to be here. 877-927-6648. Love to take your calls. Technical Friday. So let's start off with the Dow. <clears throat> the Dow's down 52 at 25,964. What's really interesting about this chart is that the moving average on the left here, the daily, the MACD is still strong. The stochastic's pulling back, but at 91%, nicely above 80%, very good. On balance volume has been failing, uh, but it's still up in the higher region. So it's price that's going to make the difference. Just make it real simple. The weekly chart is a very strong potential doji candle there. I'm going to be watching that very carefully. Why? Because if there's a doji candle next week, a close above the high of this week, which is 26.153, would be really positive on the, on the, on, on the weekly basis. A close under 25,702 25, would be a negative, not the negative, but a negative, <clears throat> and suggest that the 26,153 level might have to wait before it's taken out. Okay, monthly chart is still very strong. Parameters to watch make it real simple. If at any point <clears throat> there is a pullback under 25,700, that's the nine period exponential moving average in the daily chart, that would suggest that for the first time, since the breakout, which began way back in, I think it was November, the middle of November, or right there, yes, that big gap to the upside, 21st of November, since that day, the nine period moving average has been touched a couple of times, but basically the price has been way above. On a time basis, my work suggests that there should be an arching over and over a period of a week, we should slowly start to see the 25,700 start to be touched and then broken with 25,526. Really important support because that would impact the weekly chart. Just make it real simple. I said to subscribers of my newsletter when I put my uh, out my uh, intermediate term uh, projections for, let me just find it right here, for last week. I, this is what I do every single week, one of the many, many things I do. <clears throat> Saturday morning or Saturday sometime, I send out, start sending out my charts for Monday. And I show where we are in the within the Chapman Wave methodology. Last week, I said buy mode in place for the Dow Daily, buy mode in place for the weekly, buy mode in place for the monthly. And on a very short-term basis, kind of almost like insurance, we had just started on Friday a week ago, some insurance by starting a short position in the Dow. We have a much longer term position from the 22,300 level going back to October, which we are still long. I intend to keep, try to keep that as long as possible. Um, but I go through the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and then in sum, I said, the parameters to watch are very clear. A close above, three closes above 26,100 would immediately say to me, other things are going on and we're going to go higher. We haven't had that. We've had one close uh, that went above 26,100. Now we're going to watch to see what else happens. So I'll be putting out my report for tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And what's really important about this, or at least sometime early tomorrow, and uh, is that I still have to say that even with our uh, short term, short position, the daily chart technically is still very strong. It is price that's going to change that. Just as every time we've hit a thousand point mark, I've said that a hundred points above that would be a close above that two out of three times would be really positive. So 20, uh, 22,100, 23,100, 20, et cetera. And that's the same thing here. A close above, three closes above 26,100 really changes the, um, it just changes the chart formation in the daily to having you recycling to the upside. So those are the parameters I'm looking at. Let's go to the S&P, SPX.X. S&P is up 3.60. 
This is a very high level consolidation and it hasn't broken to new high above 20. I just want to double check. Yeah, 2807.54 that was made back on the 16th of January. I'm going to be watching this real closely. The weekly chart, um, nice candle, still potential for a doji uh, close if it closes somewhere around here. But it's leg D. So D in the daily, D in the weekly, D in the monthly. And the reason why I talk about the Ds is if you go to, let me just find this here to do this real quickly since it is Technical Friday. I want to be as clear as I can. If I can find, yeah, see this chart here in the Chapman Wave, we try to identify the lowest, most obvious low bar and merely count each successively higher peak. The alphabetizing can go to a G, but it's at the fourth highest peak, A, B, C, D. Fourth highest peak at D is where other things can happen. That's the core of the methodology. And it's what you do after that that really counts. So we, here we are at D's all the way around. It just says your foot is lifted off the accelerator. Um, for a moment, you're hovering over the break. You want to see now the market has to prove itself. Everything I'm looking at, and I'll go through that. All week I've been going through charts of Caterpillar, Alcoa, uh, etc. cetera, Deer. Um, this is going to, and Boeing, we're going to be watching things really closely. The QQQ, which is the NDX 100, new high. No, a new all-time high. Up in the Chapman Wave inside track, a repellent zone. And it's uh, the high today is 166.61. Uh, this is now a leg D. It's recycled. Leg E in the weekly. Leg only a leg C in the monthly. And that's still very positive. Look at the angle of ascent. Look at this. Now we're getting to the, where is my angle? Uh, I think we're at about 68%, maybe 70 not even 70%. But it's, it's increasing. That's the monthly chart. Let's go to the IWM because the IWM was lagging, then it was leading, then it was lagging. And now it's kind of lagging. It's up 135 at 157.88. I mean lagging not on the day because it's up 0.86%. That is one of the bigger percentage moves. But it is under the 159.41 peak E high. And it's in leg E slash C in the weekly chart, leg E in the monthly. Technicals here are good. Funnily enough, not quite as good as some of the others that we've seen a moment ago. Now, I want to go through this. If we go to the gold, gold is up about $7, 7 7.7. Holding the nine period walking average, uh, nine period exponential moving average, I call this walking the nine EMA. The MACD is still good. Stochastic actually has pulled back quite a bit, still at 84%. Good. Not as good as when it was accelerating high. So, this is a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Squash on the left. This is the daily stochastic and MACD. And that says you can usually go all the way to a leg to a peak A, B, and even a C using the stochastic, but then the stochastic usually pulls back and the MACD is fast moving average. So this is the talk. This is where you're going first gear, second gear, third gear. And then all of a sudden, you want to let, let loosen up a little bit and let the, the, the momentum, the fast moving average of the MACD continue to take you to this, the D. And it takes sometimes a little bit longer to get to the D. We'll see. D will start the moment uh, gold continuous contract goes above 1344.5. And it's at 1334.8 right now. It isn't acting as well as one would expect, but it's, still, it's holding pretty nicely. Um, let's go to silver. Silver right now is at 17.04. Um, it's only at 0.086. It's under the nine period moving average. It's within this rectangle formation that I like to draw when you've got a long-legged doji. And those will be the parameters to watch. I'll be back. We'll talk about crude oil. We have to talk about this chart right here. And that is the bonds, the yields on the bonds screaming up. I'll be back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non on FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Yields, it's really important. In fact, it's probably one of the most important things we should look at. So let me just finish up here. Silver has boundaries, and the boundary is the high of 17.45 that was made on the 16th, and the low on the same day of 16.80. I actually, t I like to draw the rectangle, but what I actually, actually do is I grab smaller parameters, and the parameter to watch would be resistance at 17.21, the high of the following day, the 17th, and then the low of yesterday, and I like to make them narrow first. My eye is saying, keep in touch with your uh, larger uh, outer points, the wicks of the the wick high and wick low of the 16th, but start off small. And this small says a, a break into the 17. What did I say? That was 1722 area would immediately say, yep, now we can go to the top. And a break below yesterday's low of 16.91 suggests that you're going to re there's a good chance of retesting that low. And if you look at this right here, this is the 50 period exponential moving average. It's just above the low that was made. At 16.80, so you're looking at a cushion that, if it breaks, says, uh-oh, that could be a bit of a drag on gold. So I'm watching this pretty closely. If you look at the HGX, which is the, uh, sorry, the HG, which is the continuous contract of, of copper, this is just, it cannot have strength and hold. It just keeps breaking down. Look how many times since it broke below on the 5th, broke below the nine-period moving average, not one day has it been able to hold the gains above that. It always closes below. Even today, it's below. And that's saying that the weekly nine-period moving average, which is right there at 3.18, that's going to be very important. So I'm watching crude oil. I'm watching copper. Let's go to crude oil. Then I'll go to the dollar and the currencies. Uh, crude oil right now is down 59 cents, made a peak E top. Uh, short term, that's a short term. I haven't got a down arrow yet because the MACD is still, it hasn't closed negative and the stochastic still above 80%. If these, if if crude oil closes anywhere under 62.70, it's a 63.29 in the next couple of days, there's a real good chance I'm going to put a down arrow. And on a very short term basis, crude oil could pull back. I still don't think it's in the shorting category. I think it's going to try to find support. It's more a matter of where would I want to buy if I haven't bought yet? Where would I want to enter in, say, the USO or something like that? That's just the way at this point I need to look at it. I just I don't want to be 
confused in my mind when the technicals are strong to be shorting, even if you can make some money. Now we're going to go to the dollar, which uh, when I last looked was down. Now it's up three cents um, at 90.56. There was a trough F if there's no new high today, a new higher low today than yesterday. And what's really important about this <laughs> is that within the context of my arch formation that says you've got two bars in which to get back above, in this case, 91.01, .01, the low of the 8th of September, or there's a good chance that every bounce is going to fail and you're going to make lower lows until you get a really strong buy signal from the daily that helps the weekly. And I don't see that yet. I do see 89.65, the 200 period exponential moving average in the monthly chart as a very important support. And it has to break at 90.56 right now. It has to really close above 91.45 to show that it's got enough strength to have a pretty decent bounce to the 200 period moving average somewhere up at the 93.20 level. Huh, that's going to be tough. Look at the EUR USD now. This is fascinating to me. Um, you've gone to a G slash B in the, in the weekly chart, the monthly, uh, sorry, the daily chart, the weekly chart, the one in the middle. This is the one that's so important because on the close today, it looks to me like I'm going to have to count that as a B and not as an alternate count. Why? Because it's closing so much higher above the high of the week of the 8th of September of 1.209. And the monthly chart is really improved above the 200-period the moving average, still halfway through the month, just over halfway. And so there's a lot of a lot of time to go. But so far, this is good. I am going to say that the euro looks pretty darn good. And the USDJPY, which is the yen, dollar-yen currency pair, is starting to fail again. Wow, it looks like it, at 110.59, it really wants to go to the 109.40s, the 200-period exponential moving average. Something fabulous has to happen to get above 112, which I then say is great. That is good action. But so far, 110.59, not so good action. Now we can go to the TLT. The TLT is pulling back. It's down 32 cents. No big deal at 123.39. But it is a big deal in the weekly chart because it just touched that 200 period moving average that I said is so important. Now, one of the things that we did this morning for my subscribers to my opening call newsletter in my traders corner, that's where we put all, all our positions and what we're looking at and why. And we, we, we have um, some of the symbols there, we just follow closely. We don't have positions, but they're very important. I give parameters for everything. So the TLT, the 20-year Treasury bond ETF, is saying to me that you've got to look at yields. Boom, we look at yields. Look at the 30-year. Look how close they are in unison on the way up, and the weekly chart is only in a C. This power move says there's really a good chance that it's going to go to a weekly leg D. That says higher five-year yields, the T, the FVX, cyan colored five-year T note yield, the brown in leg D is the 10-year T note yield, the TNX. And now this is going to be really important. The white one is the 30-year. It's kind of been ho-hum in the middle of a range. It is going to start to break out if it takes out last week's high of 29.44 and it's at 29.10 right now up 22 cents this is going to be a real test of a lot of things and what i'd say to subscribers is because of what i'm looking at and because we probably have missed the tbt entry today because i'm sure it was, it was going to gap up but i do think that the tbt which is the inversion of the tlt i think is telling us that perhaps we can finally see the home builders Hey, what happened here? The home builders, there it is, and the, the uh, HGX Philadelphia Housing Index is trading at 361.22, up 63 cents. I'm watching this closely because there's a chance that some of the home builders are going to be impacted. But Wood, which is the ICS Global Timber and Forestry ETF, that's still moving sharply higher. It's up 69 cents at 75.74, all-time high. Um, so. I'm watching these things really closely, but I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if I start to see some of the home builders start to pull back uh, from about this level. Now, I need to talk about a couple of things. I had a quick question. No, it was a question. I decided I would like to do it. And it was, 
if you have time, because it's Technical Friday, I do want to do this because it's it, it's a stock that I followed periodically for years. BIG is the symbol. Uh, it's big lots, uh, big lots. You know, they have those. I, they they just buy out uh, leftovers all over the show in the building, the materials all over the what, what, whatever they can get, and then they put them up for sale. Uh, and they they're really odd lots. I I, I believe that's what I, I, if I recall. Look at this monthly chart trading at fifty nine seventy five. It's up fifty nine cents. Look at you know I like, I love to look at channels. I've done in, I, I I started off in this in this business when I was studying channels and the waveform. And it's just incredible. I use this particular technique in channel uh, drawing. I just say be consistent, whatever you do. I'd like to talk about this because it's telling us a little bit of an internal story about the economy. And I'd like to uh, go into it in a little bit more detail. It's at highs, almost all time highs. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 56. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. So what I want you to look at was big VIG trading at 59.65, up 49 cents. But I just want to do this. Uh, I won't be too long because um, there's not all that much to discuss. It's in... Um, E slash B in the in the monthly chart. It's in the most beautiful up channel. It's in the resistance area. That's been the resistance area since the top of May 2007. Every time it's made higher highs, there's a trend line. How do these things work? I have an idea of how they work, but it's not a mathematical idea. It's an emotional idea. But the most important thing is back in that range. But the technicals are still very strong. So all I can say is if you're long, keep long, stay long. 
that, that uh, longer term that is this is the monthly chart but what's really important is that the weekly chart has made a v-shaped top i want to see the same remember we we're talking about that chart just a moment ago i want to see it closed nicely above the left side high in this case the week of the 8th of uh, december 60.20 was the high the technicals are confirming this rally and the magd not so much the stochastic or the relative strength index and not even the on balance volume so i'm going to be watching this closely why because this is an area right here where unless there's a nice powerful move into the 60 point uh, about a point and a half higher it could start to see resistance and it's in the leg e in the weekly chart and the magd and stochastic aren't anywhere close to as strong as they were when it made the high back on the 8th of december at 60.20 and here it is at 60 point 15 as a high 5090 59.70 price right now same day um and the magd and stochastic are improving but i most importantly on a short-term basis 58 to 57 is support that must hold anything that takes it below that next week says uh oh now it's in for a high level consolidation i say high level consolidation uh, a 10 10 percent move uh, down is you know it could be expected uh but that's kind of the way i'm looking at it right now how much higher can it go i cannot say until it closes until it gets close to 61 and then i'll say to you ah now it's raised the base but up until then i'm just looking at it step by step but it is an important stop because this is what i'm trying to for my for my subscribers we're in a whole bunch of areas that so far have been under the radar they're not market sensitive they've proved that over the last uh, couple of weeks i have one that i hope is totally market sensitive a brand new short we put on this morning uh, which fortunately is pulling back now but that that's a starter position so we're starting slowly to increase our, our um, positions on the short side uh, but i'd like to keep these longs as long as possible um and, okay let's go to the other questions axp american express uh, comes out with news first time it's had bad news first quarter I think it's ever had in 20 years something amazing um, of some negativity so it's in, now it's in a sell mode in the daily weeklies and a leg E made a new high and it's making a new uh, weekly low for the last month and a half right now as we speak at 96.80 down 3.06 I suggest to you that uh, looking out American Express being in a, in a leg C to the upside in the monthly uh, is vulnerable shorter term. We'll see how the 91 uh, level in the monthly nine period exponential moving average, how that monthly chart holds up because the technicals are still pretty strong. The weekly you can see for the first time, boom, just suddenly turned down the stochastic. This is, of course, Friday. We haven't closed at 4 o'clock. But so far, the stochastics pulled back to 88%. Not bad. It's under 80. That's a real problem. But it is turning down. Relative strength took a huge move. You see that big red uh, line there? Uh, moved down. And the MACD, for the first time since uh, September the 1st, has crossed negative. So I'm suggesting to you, this is not, uh, this is not a stock that I want to be long as a new position. If you are long it, I would take a, quite a, I'd take quite a bit off. I'd keep maybe a third, but I'd definitely take two thirds off. Um, or you could do this. It's a 96.82. Take something off immediately and then say, you know what, if it closes under 95, I'll take some, some more off. You could do it in stages. But I am saying to you, um, if you it, it needs to get to 100.50 100 by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week to show that this was just a one-day aberration, a one-off. I don't think so. I think this is, we're looking at a lot of stocks that have this potential right now. Next thing, so that's American Express. Um, so let's just quickly look at MasterCard because it's the same category. This is still screaming to the upside in leg D with a potential doji candle. Look at this. Everything about this is it should at least have a little bit of a pullback here, just on the daily basis, 166.11. 162.28 is the nine period moving average to 160.35 support. Leg E in the weekly gone above the uh, up channel, uh, re uptrend resistance line. The leg, what is that? E in the monthly. Uh, I have to tell you, the more I look at these, the more I'm saying, gee, don't, don't be surprised if out of the blue we suddenly get some bad news filtering into this market because. Uh, there are just so many extensions. So uh, GTU says uh, S&P longest streak 
ever without a minus 5% pullback from highs. The ramification, ramification is twofold. In the S&P, the ramification is that I need to see any pullback. How does it hold um, key support? That's all. I'm making it real simple. The monthly chart and weekly chart technicals are fabulous. Actually, they're excellent. The daily chart, excellent. I would just say to you, that it would be a close under 27.75 in the S&P that starts to say to me, okay, get ready. Now, I've seen weekly and monthly charts for any of you trade and you have your 10-minute chart and there may be a 30-minute and a 60 or 120-minute chart. You've seen how often suddenly there's a huge move down in the, um, the sh very short term and it doesn't impact either the uh, 30 or the 120 as much as you'd think. Other times, there's a really big move, and all of a sudden, you're looking at those charts, and you say, wow, all of a sudden, the MACD and Stochastic have been turned from very positive to very negative. A lot depends on the, you speak, because of the way it's measured, the look-back period. It depends on where you've come from, and I'm saying to you that because of the look-back period being so strong, it's going to take a close, at least three closes under 27.72 in the S&P to really negate the strength in the daily and the weekly charts, and then we'll see what happens in the weekly charts. I have to look at it that way. Um, uh, uh, there was a question there. I hope I answered that. So yes, I, we will be getting a 5% correction in the S&P. It's going to happen. And what really made me nervous, um, of course, I don't know when, what really made me nervous was that a little bit yesterday when I listened to CNBC and Bloomberg, and this morning just at 6 o'clock, I, I, I try to listen to you a little bit. I, I, I really want to know what was going on with the the, uh, the bill that's supposed to pass um, or not. And there were just so many people in the short space of time that I've been listening. And he also at the uh, at my at the fitness center when I had the, uh, the, the the machine next to me you had the the printer the uh, CCI. What is it? For the hard of hearing. They have the you can put it onto. Uh, automatic notation and letter, uh, um, translation, and you can read it in silent mode. So I'm looking at that and I'm, I'm reading it. And I have to tell you, there, even, there were even people say, even if there's a shutdown, I'm extremely bullish. Well, you know, there are a confluence of things that are going on here. They could suddenly turn negative. It could be yields, it could be a shutdown, and it could be the fact that the political scenario is in increasingly going to imply that maybe the infrastructure bill, if it's ever comes to, comes along, could be uh, an issue. So there are things out there that could, on a shorter term, become effective. I'll be right back. Dow's down 49. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that 
that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yes, so now what we're looking at is a uh, question about G. What's the question about G? G has gone from... 52-week uh, low, 19 to 16 in a few sessions, $11 soon. So, yeah, you know, G really has problems. And these are, these are systemic problems. These are not just superficial problems. So what I would say is there's a good chance, a nice balance to 16.55 off the 16.02 uh, low this morning. I would say that GE is just going to be lower lows and lower highs for a little while. To, let's see. I'd even say for maybe another three to five or six weeks, a couple of balances, but making lower lows. And then at some point, there'll be something that um, just triggers a more concerted effort, and it could be that it's splitting up, and then everybody says the parts are greater than you know, some of the whole, and oh, yeah, whatever it is they say. But I'm just looking at this, and I'm saying the best shorting opportunity is gone. That, that, that was the day that it reversed sharply on the 12th. Um, and at this particular point, yes, if you have patience, I think you could hold a short position. But I think risk-reward for those big pop-ups um, that could take you out, and you've got to get back in, the best risk would have been up above 1850, and then you could, I say, then you know what? Now you can sit back for a while because any bounce should stall in the 18s and then come back down again. So just risk reward wise, shorting no. But yes, I do see that it's going to go um, to lower lows and low, uh, lower highs at least a little while longer, especially based on the monthly chart, which is still the MACD is very, very negative. Um, so bounces are probably uh, shorting opportunities, but the best risk reward has, has gone just in terms of what I'm looking at as we as we're talking right now. Next question was um, crude oil. What about crude oil? Uh, okay, just away from yeah. If you're looking at the USO, look, USO has gone to a leg E. And then it goes to a peak E. This looks a little bit like copper. I think that copper chart is telling us this is a pattern that we need to be um, cognizant of. We've got to be wary of because we're seeing the same thing now. Um, gold isn't quite the same, but, but that copper chart does say that some, some of these commodities uh, could have time rather than price for the sideways move. So I'm watching it at 12.68, down 8 cents. Mm, if next week at any point this closes under 12.40, then there's a chance that it's going to go towards the nine period moving average of 12.05. I actually have this in the leg F 
I'm not even going to change the notation right now. In the weekly chart, look how nicely it broke out above the V-shaped pattern. Um, normally, you'd expect it to come back. That is a huge comeback to the 12 high that was made in the week of the 6th of January um, from 82, uh, 1282 right now. But I think that that's a possibility if it closes under 1240 by midweek next week. But at this particular point, just a high-level consolidation had a spectacular move. Next question was, sell-off during the second half of January, uh, during the second presidential year, like in 14 and in 2010. You know, I it's a possibility. I'm just saying that there... There are so, there's such a confluence of factors here that are saying by next week we could have many things in place. You know, I'm looking at the SMHs. Still, even today, um, another new high in layer D above that left side, right side price time match in the cup formation weekly chart. This is going to be important because if this closes, if the semis close above 105.83, that was the high of the week of the 24th, closed nicely higher, somewhere about somewhere around 107 rather than closer to 106.50, I'm going to say, you know, that's that's pretty good action. And it is a harbinger of other things in the uh, queues and the um, XLK, et cetera, in that whole tech area. So I'm just watching it. No position yet. We, 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 we have one foot ready to do something, but I'm not going to do anything until I get a real nice signal in the semis. IBM, yes, good question about IBM. Uh, wave count, IBM made a peak F and an island reversal today. And that's saying to me that IBM, with all that talk about cloud and then chain, and oh, man, I tell you, there was, this is not good action. So I'm suspecting that IBM is in the process of the monthly chart, like Goldman Sachs, kind of building, building, building. Later in the year, I think it's going to be a real big participant. I just think for now, chop, chop, chop. 159 would be my 200 period exponential moving average support in the weekly chart. Between that and 157, let's see that holds if there's any weakness next week. Um, I'm just watching it. I have no position in it. Um, uh, next question I had was JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan, let's see, making a leg. I'm, I'm calling this a leg F to the upside. I don't see any reason why I should give it an alternate count. Um, MACD and Stochastic are still good, but getting a little bit overbought. And leg F in the weekly chart, leg C only in the monthly chart. This is a great-looking stock. I'd love to see the, all the financials start to pull back with, with yields moving up like this. Ooh, they got good support. So at 113.33, up $0.07, cents, between 111 and 110, that's going to be key support. If there's a break below that support level, you go to the 109s any time in the next two weeks, you're in for a consolidation. But so far, this is one of the best-looking sectors. The reason why we still want to hold our bank stock, because they, they're acting very nicely. Our next question I had was, uh, oh, wait a minute, what is that? What is that? Oh, okay, this is something for to check out. Yeah, so if you look at the IAI, I believe that's what the one. Yeah, that's the iShares US broker dealer sector, leg E in the weekly at 100 at 60 sorry leg e in the monthly at 66.19 um this is actually f slash c in the weekly chart f slash c technicals are very good and it's only a leg c in the weekly chart and that's a, a daily chart i keep in the daily chart and i could i do an alternate count um oh a b c d e I'm going to put it as an F. I should spend more time. I'm not going to rush through this. All I'm going to say is that the IAI, which is the broker de U.S. broker dealer iShares and securities ETF, holding really nicely, high-level consolidation, and I'm suspecting that this is going to be a fantastic area in 2018. But I would not be surprised if we need to see some kind of a pullback first. And the most important thing about it is the um, support at 66.19 right now, the support is at 65. If this closes any time next week, if there's a close under 64.20, it says, uh-oh, be careful. The nine-period moving average in the weekly chart of 63.33 becomes game. But if it pops up to the 67.80 to the 68.30 level by Tuesday, that is really good action. No position right now. 
wish I did have a position because it has been a real big winner. Um, okay, so I think we've covered a, co a couple of things. I want a question in the... Um, uh, Basil, didn't you want to discuss 200 period exponential moving average on ASA Technical Friday? Oh, if you want me to. So uh, that let me put this in ASA, which we own. Um, this is um, ASA Gold and Precious Metals Limited. Uh, trading at 11.61 up 10 cents uh 200 period moving average i'll, I'll talk about that so we'll be back that's what happened type finishes our dow's coming back must be some kind of talk somewhere that's being uh hailed positively dow's down 30 hi i'm steve rhodes host of the trader's edge heard daily at tfnn.com and author of mastering probability a daily investment and trading newsletter service that i send out each morning by 8 a.m my morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Um, Hi everyone, we're back. So a couple of questions came up. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to One question was a really good question was, Dazzle, if you had to pick one stock to monitor to look for the top in market, would it be Goldman Sachs? I have to tell you, in the next phase, I'm thinking it's probably going to be Goldman Sachs. I, I don't understand how they've lost that whole trading ability. You know, there was a period where I think they said for a year they had like three days of losing trade, something amazing. And, of course, now things are being watched a lot closer. Maybe that's the issue. But I think Goldman Sachs will be back. It's only in leg B in the monthly chart, um, 262, 262.14, round number high for the January so far. Um, I'm watching it closely, yeah, that's all. And if Goldman Sachs goes under 238, that's a real problem. But uh, we're going to be watching it. And a Caterpillar on the shorter term, I would put into the category of this is one to watch for the this particular phase right now. So let's do a couple of things here. The VIX index that we're about to close out, so we're going to go to Steve Rose, another great show coming up. 
And then, of course, you've got Dave White. Great. Thank you, Dave. It was a wonderful uh, webinar you gave the other night. Recommend anyone who didn't get a chance to view it to go there. Then, of course, Tom O'Brien, Friday wrap-up. And have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And we will see. I think it might be only after the market closes today that things get uh, cooking in the uh, the bill that's, that's maybe going to pass or not. Oh, we've got a caller. We've got Scott Safety Harbor. Scott, how are you? Hey, good to be back, Basil. Good to hear your voice. I'll get good. Right to Thank it. you. Uh, I've only made been back in the market a couple months. I made one trade on X. I think that's going to retrace back into the, the the forty something. And I made a trade on Merck the other day, but now okay, let, let, oh, you want to, we're going to run out of time. GE. Scott, Scott, you want to look at GE? So I'm looking at GE. I think GE is getting into for you a tradable position where it's going to have some bounces you can trade off. But that whole 16 area is going to be key support. Wouldn't be surprised if it actually tries to hit 1550s. But I think this is going to be trading. And I have to thank you because we've been in CX for quite a while, and it's doing very nicely. Yes, sir. So I'm hoping to hear from you next week. In the meantime, we'll be watching GE closely, and we're about to I sign think we've off. We've got another another sleeper there with GE, and it's just, just I mean, you, you got so much just flat out name recognition. I mean, you do, yeah, electric, you do you for bounces, sixteen bucks for bounces. <laughs> that's your kind of play. Hey, thanks for calling, folks. Have a great Talk day. To you next week, Basil. Bye -bye. Speak to you all on Monday. Have a great weekend. We'll see where the market is this time next weekend. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bag and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.